because Vancouver is a counterattacking team, usually they can really just sit behind the ball. What were you doing today to disrupt that? Well, we worked on a little week, you know. I mean, how many times did they pump the ball 60 yards in the first half alone, you know, to Kamara uh, and playing off of him? We worked on a little week, having good shape, reacting to no pressure on the ball and knowing they're going to serve it long and, and getting the numbers behind and around for uh, winning the second balls. Um, they're a very dangerous team like that, uh, plus you couple in the fact that they, especially in the second half, got the ball wide a number of times and whip, whipping crosses into some pretty big boys. Um, they're effective in what they do. And, um, you know, if, if one thing, the, the effort and the defensive structure was there tonight, I'm proud of the guys for that. Well, if I'm being very honest uh, in assessing the team five games in, I don't like the way we're playing with the ball. And I don't think a lot of the players do. And it's not coming down to finger pointing from me, from the players or anything. It's just kind of like, what's going on here? When did we stop? When did we stop playing? When did we stop having ideas? You know, looking at from last year, from preseason this year, um, all of a sudden it's just, it seems maybe a little bit of a confidence thing. Um, so getting him efforts in front of the goal, I don't think he had a ton, uh, but he did have a small handful. And when we're clicking, you know, you guys see it. When we're clicking, our front four especially, we're a pretty damn fun team to watch. But it's been few and far between this year so far. So we're looking to get back to the way we know how to play. But hey, we won 2 1. Mike, that seemed maybe 25th minute. It seemed, and maybe I'm wrong, so correct me. But You probably are. But yeah, yeah, that's fair. It seemed that Albert was maybe a little, holding the ball up a little bit more because it seemed like maybe first 20 minutes when you get the ball, it would be very direct trying to spring guys. It seemed like he was maybe holding it up a little bit more and maybe seemed to allow your team to maybe settle in in that last 15 or so minutes of the. The first oh, you talk, you talk on the first half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was that maybe a concerted effort on his part to see that maybe that was what the game needed at that point, to maybe a little more possession instead of trying to, you know, play quick like you prefer, it seems, a lot? Well, I mean, we talk a lot about throughout the week, uh, every week before the game, about recognizing when to go full force at goal and transition, which we're pretty good at, uh, but recognizing when that's not on and pulling it out and possessing it. So it wasn't a... It wasn't a tactical thing. I was yelling from the sideline, Albert, hold the ball up, so let's get everybody forward. You know, I was a smart player, and I think uh, he took that upon himself. But, you know, we, ha we, have to, we have to continue to do better, or we have to do better in recognizing when to possess the ball, especially at home, get teams tired, get them moving a little bit, as well as just going full force at goal and maybe have a 30%, 20% success rate of getting an opportunity. Mike, there was a, a, a good play right at the beginning of the second half where Albert got the ball in a bit of space going forward, was able to go forward and create a good opportunity on goal. What can you guys do to continue to create opportunities like that in the future? Practice. We practice four days a week, so we're going to work on that for sure. That's good. Mike, do you th I know you had the, the defensive substitutions that injuries caused early in the game. Do you think that contributed a little bit? It seemed like maybe some of the passing out of the back was a little bit sloppy in that early going and got a lot of times seem as going straight to Vancouver on some Yeah. Um, if I go back and look, perhaps, yeah, I, I could say that that could have had an effect, but I thought that Adam and, and David settled in pretty well. I, I honestly do. I thought David brought a presence with, with Kamara, especially how big he is. Um, and Henley, once he got into the rhythm after, you know, five, ten minutes, I thought that he did very well. Um, but no, I mean, you know, we watch a lot of video after the games. We talk a lot of uh, preparation for the game throughout the week. And I honestly, if you would have told me that Justin Glad would, you know, would struggle with the ball at times as he has this year, uh, as much as he has, I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't believe I would have said, no, nah, there's no chance, you know? And every player goes through something, you know? Every player, every team goes through something. And I'm not pointing out Justin Glad. It's, it's everybody. I'm just using him as an example. Um, you know, they're, they're good players, but everybody goes through certain things. We've really been trying to focus over the last, since the LAFC game, about defensive structure, getting behind the ball, and then playing from there. And, you know, aside from Toronto, really, you look at the New York game, you look at this game tonight, these guys are putting that effort in and doing that, and now we have to remember how we played out of that last year. So we'll get there.
maybe a follow up to to Glad as as a former defender yourself. Does that when you're trying to mark up a guy like Kamara, does that maybe mentally wear on you, or maybe those passes maybe can be a little? Me, bit no, I was the most mentally strong player you've ever met. There was nothing phased me. Um, in, in all in seriousness, uh, no. Listen, defender's job is to mark. A mark player is keep the ball out of the goal along with the goalkeeper, and then in transition be able to start our attack and build the ball out of the back. It doesn't always work out that way. It's a 90-minute game. There's always ebbs and flows of the game. There's always peaks and valleys. Um, and Justin and our defenders have done some very good stuff in almost every game. But to get into a more consistent level, and you also have to look ahead of that, you know? Who's moving? Where are they moving to? Um, you know, how active are they to, to, to want the ball? Um, and again, a lot of teams, most teams that come in here, except for maybe New York, and even LAFC did this to us, they're getting behind the ball. They're getting 10 guys behind the ball and make it difficult uh, and, hitting, and trying to hit us in transition. So it's a combination of a lot of things. It's five games in. You know, we're 2-2-1 two, two, and one now, I believe. Um, we have 29 games left to go. You know, we're not panicking. We're not worried. We just won 2-1. So we're going to rejoice in that for the moment. We have a tough game. Quick turnaround against NYC on a small field against a very talented team. Uh, so we're going to prepare for that. But we're going to continue, like I said, to look to get back to the way that we know how to play. Mike, Losing. Our, we've been talking about mentality all week. How much of a change in mentality did you see tonight? Um, yeah, I think we killed that last week, you know, as a, as a talking point. Um, which I brought up, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I thought the mentality was very good tonight, very good, you know, and you even talk about two guys going out, like we said, and the guys coming in, their mental fortitude and, and for, for the rest of the team to all of a sudden, the switch like that happens for them to gather themselves and, and, and continue to work, you know, I thought it was good, very good. It was a good response. Losing DeMar and Marcelo in that first half, how did that change your strategy? Didn't change our strategy at all, at all, you know? I mean, that's why we train throughout the week. That's why we have everybody at training listening, you know, starters, non-starters. Um, it didn't change anything. The only thing that changed is when, they, when, when Henley entered the game. Henley came in first, I believe, before Horst. When Henley came in, it was, hey, take five minutes, get a touch on the ball, settle in, don't do anything too crazy getting forward. Just... You know, let the game come to you. And the same thing with Dave. And once, th once that happened, didn't change much, you know, the, the way we wanted to play. You gave Corey Baird the nod in the starting lineup to, tonight. Maybe talk about that decision, and then what did you like from him going the full 90? Um, well, I mean, I, I don't know the exact number, but before tonight, I think he has 23 minutes as a pro. I think we got him on against New York, I believe it was. And uh, at the end of Toronto, and he scored a goal. And Corey, every day in work, he possesses the characteristics, uh, both as a player and a person, that I gravitate towards. He's an honest, hardworking, uh, talented player. You know, it's not just all about hard work and, and, and strong mental. You know, you have to have the ability to play with the ball. And he has all that. Um, so I have to, I want to reward him. I have to reward him. And I thought he did very well tonight. I thought the assist at the end of the game came off of a great transition that him and Severino both were doing some defensive work. We win the ball, and we, they get up the field, and Corey assists on the goal. I mean, uh, so does this mean that Corey's going to start every game? No, you know, I, don't know, I don't even know yet if he's going to start again against NYC in four days. Um, does it mean that he's arrived and, and he's the real deal? No. It means that he's earned through training every week, through preseason, through 23 minutes over two games of coming off the bench and giving us a spark, he's earned the right to start, and that's why I started him today.